We'll call this meeting of the Black Hawk County Board of Supervisors to order for May, March 29th, 2022. Roll call. Mr. Beter? Leyland? Here. Little? Schwartz? Here. Trelka? Here. White? Here. Have a moment of silence to reflect on our actions of the day. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have the agenda received as proposed or as amended? So moved. Second. The amendments are the last two are being deleted for today. 10 E and F. By recommendation from the public comments. Oh, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Public comments. Anybody from the public and any comments they'd like to make here in the boardroom? Anyone online? Hearing none, we'll move on to claims and payments. Mr. Perry. This week's expenditures total $287,013.60. The Sheriff's Department makes up $21,843. Secondary roads, $34,757. Health Department, $17,143. And finally, maintenance, $52,089. Everything looked normal. Thank you. Motion to approve. Second. We move the second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Leyland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. White? Yes. Resolution adopted. Next is a presentation of 2030 Vision Plan. Mayor Clinton Hart. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, in cyberspace as well. It's on the desktop. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you know, I didn't know how to take it. He um, first put that on there and he said, give a better presentation button. <laughs> I thought it was for me. <laughs> uh, but good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to talk a little bit about our 2030 vision plan. And thank you, Supervisor Troka, uh, as well for the invite this morning. Uh, I think the saying is, if you uh, plan to fail, if you fail to plan, then you plan to fail. And over the last two years, the city of Waterloo has been very active in trying to create an overall strategic vision uh, for our city, for our citizens. Uh, throughout the pandemic, we know uh, that there will be a time when we would uh, be moving away from the pandemic, and we wanted to make sure uh, that we had a collective vision for the year 2030. So we started out with uh, work with uh, DeNovo um, from out of Cedar Rapids to help us with our strategic visioning, and we had tons of meetings. We had a stakeholder kickoff. Uh, we had interviews, and we uh, put in parentheses so many interviews. Uh, we had uh, council meetings. We had neighborhood associations, affiliate groups, nonprofits uh, sharing in this creative space. We had uh, community surveys, and we did something different. We had a Spark event, and Spark event was uh, at the amphitheater, and it gave an opportunity for 10 citizens to come up with 10 different projects that were completely outside of the box to talk about their hopes and their dreams uh, for our community. And after that Spark event, we had more meetings. We had tours, and we had another stakeholder meeting uh, to kind of collect information from what we're seeing. And we even expanded uh, our survey time as well to make sure that more people were included. 
And we came out with a shared vision statement uh, from all of the surveys and conversations. And that is Waterloo is a community of opportunity where everyone can prosper. And I'm especially glad of, uh, of that uh, statement because my parents uh, moved to the city of Waterloo uh, in the 60s to escape the turbulent times of the South and to try to uh, have a family and give our family uh, better opportunities. And so they came to Waterloo uh, because they wanted uh, a, a greater opportunity for family. And there's so many connecting stories from all of you in this room to uh, your family's stories growing up as well. And from that mission statement, uh, we came up with uh, eight big ideas uh, in eight years. And the first one is flying the W. Uh, and flying the W. Oops. Oops. Flying the W uh, is, everybody's probably seen the Chicago Cubs. I know we probably have some Red Sox fans in here, some Twins fans. But you see the bright blue W for flying the W. And that is planting a, planting a flag on where our community is winning. Number two is elevate housing. Three is celebrating and connecting neighborhoods. Number four is Waterloo Works. Five, Crossroads Double Down. Uh, six, Power Up Downtown. Seven, Sports Town USA. And eight, uh, Community Opportunity. And I'll go through those a little bit more uh, in depth. Uh, but from then, it is more each one of them individuals on there. OK. Um, right, so for, yeah, let's skip ahead a little bit. And then I'll come back. Uh, number one is flying the W, as I mentioned. And flying the W means that uh, there are so many incredible stories about our city. And oftentimes, uh, those stories are placed on the back burner because of more negative stories that have been shared about our community. But, you know, we live, we work, we play here, we have incredible businesses, we have uh, incredible citizens. And we are tired, and this community is tired of those stories taking a back seat uh, to so much negativity. And so we have launched an aggressive marketing scheme uh, for the city of Waterloo that's going to plant that flag uh, in all of the positive things that are taking place in our local community. Um, and that is executing, uh, so what we've done thus far uh, on this is one, try to gather some cost estimates about uh, uh, the actual cost. Uh, the second one is uh, to execute the branding and flag creation uh, with DeNovo, and that was approved by our city council on March 7th. We've also began the process of a city rebrand re <coughs> and developing a Fly the W flag program. Uh, we'll have to find some funding to execute and work with uh, local, local advertisers, marketers uh, to find effective ways to be able to execute uh, that plan. Number two, as I mentioned, was elevate housing. And elevate housing is important because having a nice, affordable house, uh, but not just new houses in certain parts of our community. What about housing in this entire uh, community. There should be no child that uh, would walk by and not see some type of growth and opportunity uh, within our community. So the goal originally was 800 new or renovated houses in eight years. Uh, but we thought that if we're going to do it, we really need to challenge ourselves. And we are moved that to 800 renovated houses and 800 new houses over the course of the next eight years. And from that, we've been working with small working groups, researching uh, neighborhood finance uh, corporations, and we were joined by um, uh, Supervisor Leyland on one of our trips to Des Moines to take a look at how they're structuring uh, neighborhood finance corporations. We at council approval for housing needs assessment to take a look at the pockets within our community to see where there's the greatest needs. Uh, we presented at our home buyers conference and we created an internal housing task force 
uh, to take a look at the codes that we currently have uh, on our books. Do we have uh, enough codes? Do we not have enough? Are we enforcing those codes that we have, but where are the gaps internally uh, for us to be able to properly um, navigate uh, improve housing for people? And we've continued to have neighborhood finance discussions and others will be uh, invited uh, to the table as we continue this conversation moving forward in the future. And some of the steps that you can see in elevating housing is taking a look at the Walnut Corridor, taking a look at the work that's happening in church role, but we have to make sure that the inner portions of our community, we began building up those areas as well. And on the flip side of new housing, our partnership with Hawkeye Community College, our partnership um, with uh, Habitat, and the current work that we've been doing with developers and creating funding models that attract developers to build new houses in Waterloo. So we've been taking a look from a multi-pronged uh, perspective. Uh, number three is celebrating and connecting uh, neighborhoods, you know, how can our neighborhoods be interconnected through safer, to, to be safer, to have more lighting, to have more sidewalks, but how can we increase the accessibility uh, within our neighborhoods, whether it's uh, specific parks in our neighborhood, like we're working with uh, the Gates Park area and the Burns Park area to create um, new parks and recreation in a myriad of areas, areas in our Edison neighborhood, but how can we celebrate and connect the uniqueness of our neighborhoods, but at the same time uh, continue to grow uh, community? And as you know, uh, Felicia, who has just recently taken another job, had already began the processes of working with the Grout and Waterloo Public Library to connect uh, the unique stories. Uh, so we'll be looking at hiring a new neighborhood services coordinator, and we've been taking a look outside of the box as well uh, at different communities throughout the state of Iowa and across the country. And Iowa City is one that we're looking at that are working to create a sense of place uh, for every portion or every part of their neighborhoods. Number four is Waterloo Works. Uh, we want Waterloo to have the most trained, uh, workforce in the entire state of Iowa and entire Midwest. And that's going to force us and force us to continue to build on the incredible partnerships uh, that we have within this community, whether it's via apprenticeship programs, whether it's uh, via Hawkeye Community College or the Waterloo Career Center and other partners. Uh, but also, uh, we began taking a look at reviewing data with Grow Cedar Valley and uh, Danny has made presentations to staff, to council, and people uh, within the county about our labor market. But we also have stayed close to our federal federal folks that are on board and just had a meeting last month uh, with the Secretary of Labor to talk about labor and workforce needs within the city of Waterloo and how we can connect the both to be able to maximize this opportunity uh, we have right now for training uh, professionals within our community. But also, uh, we're going to continue the newcomers and young professional events. Um, yes, we, we need to make sure they're included, they're invigorated, that they're a part of this community and we have to take care of the talent that we have in here. And then we're going to continue to convene roundtables with those that are working in this field from Hawkeye Community College, from the Waterloo Community Schools, to Grow Cedar Valley, to the 24-7 Black Group, to Momentum, Cedar Valley Sherm, uh, Iowa Works, and other partners to make sure that we're doing all that we can to creating that incredible workforce, but also connecting uh, young talent uh, to our pipeline to make sure that they stay within our community. Number five is Crossroads Double Down. Uh, I don't have to tell all of you that uh, we've seen some, um, some decrease in the amount of retail opportunities that we have at the Crossroads Mall. And so we've decided, instead of making a knee-jerk reaction on what can possibly happen, that we would take a strategic look 
at the entire area. If you think about it, we have the Lost Island theme park, we have the water park, we have the KOA campground, we have retail and Best Buy and a myriad of different stores, we have Hawkeye Community College. We have incredible pieces uh, that are already there which make us incredible. But what else can be done to this area to be able to connect and make this a destination that when people come to the Lost Island theme park that they will continue to take a look at all of the opportunities and amenities there. So what is the connecting piece? Is it more recreation? Uh, is it, is it a, a certain type of uh, themed amusement area to go with that? But we need to take a look overall at Crossroads and double down on our efforts to work with uh, the business people there. And so number one is taking a look at an overall staff review and working with the Gross Cedar Valley Community Development Council and in one-on-one -on -one with interested parties uh, looking to create more opportunity in that area. Uh, continue those conversations, but also working to hire a consultant that can bring all of those pieces together and get everyone to the table so that we can convene a broader group of stakeholders for that area. Because in five years, we want to make sure that we capitalize on this incredible opportunity uh, we have as well. Number six is power up downtown is where we're at right now. Uh, it was once stated that the, uh, uh, the, the city only had uh, bars downtown. Well, uh, if, if you believe that, then you probably forget about the convention center, then you probably forget about Young Arena, the sportsplex. Uh, you forget about the governmental operations. You forget that we have three of the best museums in the entire state of Iowa right next to one another. You forget about all of the opportunities when people try to quantify uh, our downtown, which is massive and it's incredible and it has so many opportunities. But we want to continue the positive movement uh, focuses on our downtown with a power up downtown movement. So we've been working uh, with our staff. We've been working with uh, Jessica Rucker. We've been working with Main Street. And one of the first things we're doing is connecting, uh, collecting a downtown lighting study uh, to take a look at do we need more lighting in downtown? Do we need to have lighting in alleyways? Do we need to have different types of lightings on our street? Because it creates an overall more safe environment, but also one that you can uh, participate a little bit more within the nightlife. We're also working with our Veterans Way project, and this is uh, our opportunity uh, to be able to celebrate those that have given the ultimate sacrifice, that have stood on the front lines uh, to defend our borders. And that is a Veterans Way project that um, takes into account uh, bridge lighting, takes into account uh, a Unity Park concept that takes a look at the Five Sullivan Brothers Convention Center, which is now the Waterloo Convention Center at the Sullivan Brothers Memorial, so that you can take your children and groups from all throughout this entire country and around the world can come down and learn about the history, the legacy uh, of the Sullivan family. But also added to that, um, Veterans Way uh, is about service and sacrifice and you can also learn about all of you everyday people that are making a difference in our community and this will be one of the best projects uh, to celebrate and support veterans uh, that anyone else has done in the entire state of Iowa and we're very proud of how this project is moving forward. Also taking a look at charging stations and how we can utilize the infrastructure bill and working uh, with Cedar Falls on a placemaking a project that's being um, headed by uh, Carrie Dare with Gross Cedar Valley and how we can tie our communities in and make it an even greater place by making a placemaking which will attract and bring people uh, to our area that's focused on uh, river recreation projects. Number seven is Sports Town USA. We have an incredible history of sports in this area from uh, Dan Gable to wrestling championships to basketball and football championships. But how can we tap into this, uh, to this area as well? Uh, and that is doing an overall staff review and working with Ballard King uh, studies 
uh, to take a look at aquatics and a complete indoor courts concept, which will be done at the end of this month, uh, but also working with uh, charging stations and our federal infrastructure bill and more, did I just say that? More place making. <laughs> yeah, it's a double slide, but I was ready for it. <laughs> uh, trying to go fast here. Uh, the supervisor's joking to get time. Uh, but it is, it is continuing to, yeah, that sports town has kind of jumped out of there, didn't it? Um, but can, just how do we work with our young people? How do we have more pickleball courts? How do we create outside recreation in neighborhoods? And how can we capitalize on a larger indoor court facility where we can host tournaments every week I go somewhere else and take my children how can we bring that right here to the city of Waterloo and we're on a path uh, to being able to partner to do that and last but not least and this is one that I talked about that was near and dear to my heart and that is Waterloo being a community of opportunity uh, how can we partner together with the county and and other entities here to make sure that we uh, are tearing down barriers and building up opportunities. When we take a look at just overall transportation, we've been meeting with uh, Met Transit and Intercog as well to take a look at our transportation needs. And when it comes to broadband and fiber, we know COVID has showed some gaps in our interconnectivity and uh, reliable opportunities for affordable fiber for residents and businesses. So we have began the process for a fiber study uh, and we will have the majority of the design done for fiber to the premises um, this month. And so we'll be able to share a lot more information. So we've been having conversations and there's a survey that's up right now uh, where you can uh, let us know uh, if your broadband needs are being met and what else you would like to see expanded. We've been working with uh, Gross Cedar Valley and economic inclusion to make sure that uh, we can think outside of the box to make sure we bring a diverse applicant group uh, to our employment. We know we had the 24-7 Wall Street uh, several years ago, which talked about the city of Waterloo having disparities and gaps in employment and housing in those areas. And so number eight on this is to work towards making sure we can eliminate that barrier, those barriers, and make this a place that we can continue to be proud of, that more people will call home because everyone has an opportunity uh, to be successful uh, in the city of Waterloo. And so to conclude, uh, as I almost said at the first uh, portions of it, uh, we've been uh, meeting with people, we've been evaluating the recommendations uh, from DeNovo. Uh, we've been trying to prioritize behind the scenes. We do this, we do that. And last but not least, uh, begin the process for putting working groups together to be able to address this collectively as a community. This is not just uh, the city of Waterloo governments, um, project. This is a city of Waterloo project. This is what our people want, what they ask for. So we need to make sure that we continue to get people engaged, continue to move forward so that Waterloo can be that community of opportunity by 2030. So I'm hoping to have that done by 2026. <laughs> but uh, we got a lot of work to do. And uh, we're so grateful that you would have us uh, to talk about this today. But I think I got like a minute. Uh, are there any questions for me right now? Any questions for the mayor? I just appreciate Mayor Hart coming and uh, giving us this presentation. And I'm encouraged to see all these mayors here. I think we have, what, seven, eight mayors here? Mm -hmm. And I invite any one of them to give a presentation to the board. Because Blackhawk County is not exclusive to just the areas outside our incorporated right. cities. We are an entire county, including our cities. And I'm amazed to see how far Waterloo, Blackhawk County, and all of our cities have come in 12 years. I came to the area about 12 years ago. Right. And everybody has come a long way. Uh, but there's a lot more work to do, and I think it's important for all of us to do it together. Yeah. I remember I used to joke with the firefighters at the Waterloo stations that I came from a tourist community. Mm -hmm. And I'd say, well, let's see if Blackhawk County can be the new Door County. And they would laugh. But now we have the campground, KOA campground. We have the whitewater rafting opportunities uh, or the, opportunity, the recreational opportunities on the rivers. 
Uh, our county parks are second to none. Right. Uh, Trail systems. So many things. Yeah. And, you know, Waterloo was so optimistic about where they could go in the 70s. So they became 63 square miles. That's the same size as Madison, Wisconsin. Mm. And they had a vision to fill that footprint. I think it still can be done. Yeah. Because if we build that tax space, we can drive those taxes down. Absolutely. But we, can, we all need to do it together. So any mayor can reach out to any board member and ask to be put on the uh, agenda for a presentation, and we'll make it happen. All right. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you, Mayor. Yep, thank you. You're to be commended for such an aggressive plan. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Very aggressive. Any other questions on that? Hearing none, we'll move on to receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. Morning, Kathy. Good morning, board. Kathy Nicholas, county engineer. Uh, just a brief update on the gravel roads. There are numerous potholes out on the gravel road system. We are, the motor graders are out now today and uh, weather permitting the rest of the week. It does take us about a week to get around to the entire system though, so please bear with us. It is that time of year for um, potholes. Uh, as far as dust controls, I just want to remind the public that it is also that time of year where the residents need to be contacting vendors. Uh, please take a look at our website. There are some vendors who have changed what they can offer, the types of dust control that can be offered that they are offering just due to um, issues with um, product availability is what I understand. Uh, so we ask that residents please contact their vendor by April 14th and then we will get those lists and start uh, blading the roads. Can I answer any questions at this time about the roads? Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Any other department heads? Mr. Chair, before we move on, um, I do have a slight correction for the uh, claims and payments. So. All right, go ahead. We're ready for that. Uh, the total amount, the adjusted, uh, is 272.76202. There was adjustment. So, Say um, that again. The new total is 272.76202. Thank you, James. What was the adjustment? Uh, I believe there was a credit. Okay. All right. Thank you for that update. Do we need a new vote? Yeah, that, that's what I was just going to suggest that we do do another vote yeah. since we, yeah. we're approving this. All right. All right. I'll make the motion to approve. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, that's the resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Is Tom with us? Yeah, Tom's there. Oh, okay. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Joka? Yes. Leyland? Yes. White? Yes. Resolution <coughs> adopted. Moving on to minutes approved for March 22nd, 2022. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Consent agenda by resolution? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on any of the items? Hearing none, this is a resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Sorry, Mr. Chair, I need to catch up a little bit. No, no, no. Uh, <laughs> who moved and seconded the minutes? The minutes? Yeah. Uh, I moved. Oh, that's what I said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, them too. And then who moved and seconded the consent agenda? Same two, I think. Same two, I think I did. But reversed. Yeah. Reversed, okay. All right. Up. No, not yet. Pardon? Are you caught up? Not quite. Not yet. Uh, okay. I, I'm adjusting for the uh, the presence of, of Supervisor Little. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. Trelka. Mm -hmm. Yes. Leyland. Yes. Little. Yes. Schwartz. Right. Yes, resolution adopted. We won't have an update from Mr. Delegardell today. He sent us the information online. Uh, next is contracts and agreements. This is a resolution 
that the lowest responsible bid received from American <coughs> Pavement Solutions Incorporated of Green Bay, Wisconsin for fiscal year 23 cracked ceiling maintenance project number in various locations throughout the county with a bid of $76,974.92 be awarded as Second. recommended by Catherine Nicholas. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Kathy? Yeah, I would just say, as you recall, we did open bids in the boardroom here last uh, last week. We budgeted $125,000 for fiscal year 23, and I would ask that we be allowed to take the bid from American Payment Solutions. Any idea why there's such a significant difference um, in the bids? We, like I told you in my email, this is a new where we are moving towards a crack filling process versus a crack sealing process. And this is a process that the Iowa DOT uses widely on most of their roads, and some counties use it. Uh, apparently that process itself just uh, it must be more efficient. Maybe the products are less expensive, so we're without really knowing much more about it since this, this is our first year. We think that it's just due to the fact that it's this new type of process, the crack filling versus crack sealing, which is what the other two companies, they would be doing the filling, but apparently it's more expensive for them. They said DOT's used it multiple years. Yes, this has been the standard process for the DOT to address their, their cracks and their payments for numerous years. Thank you. Any, any further questions? <laughs> this resolution, please answer as your name is called. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Right? Yes. Resolution adopted. Next is a resolution that the lowest reasonable bid received from Murphy Tra Tractor and Equipment Incorporated of Waterloo, Iowa, bid opening March 22nd, 2022 at 907 for the fiscal year 2023 purchase of two motor graders for the Blackhawk County Secondary Roads Department with a bid of $758,000 be approved as recommended by Catherine Nicholas, County Engineer. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Kathy? So we did budget $780,000 for fiscal year 23. Uh, by accepting the bid from Murphy, we will be, we, we will be getting rid of our all three of the Volvo motor graders and with this bid, this will be the last two we are, and then we will have a, a consistent fleet of John Deere motor graders. So I would ask that we be allowed to take this bid. They are the low bidder. They did meet all specifications. And we are seeing some savings with the um, eight year, 8,000 hour warranties that we are receiving. They took the Volvos on trade in? Yes, they yes, they did give us I think I gave you that information in the email. They did give us, uh, I, I don't recall the exact number, they, they did give us trade in values for the Volvos. Thank you, Kathy. Any further questions? Kathy, what's the difference uh, per unit compared to the last one we bought? I mean, is there a substantial increase or? I was thinking the the motor grader last year for FY22 was 360 to 370 thousand dollars. So uh, these would be 390 thousand dollars each. So uh, you know maybe a five percent increase. I, I will double check those numbers. Thank you, mm -hmm. Thank you Kathy. Thank you. This is a resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Hello. Schwartz? Yes. Yes. Jelka? Yes. Leyland? Yes. White? Yes, resolution adopted. This is a resolution that the contract between Blackhawk County and Matts Incorporated, Brooklyn, Iowa, Letting Hill, March 8, 2022 at 9.05 a.m. with Project 7523, fiscal year 2023, seal coding in various locations throughout the county with a total bid of $92,058.50. Damages $800 a day. Be approved and direct the chair to sign for same and receive and place on file contractor's bond and certificate of insurance. Second. Kathy? Yes, in FY23, we did budget $100,000. Uh, as you know, we opened the bids. I think we had four bids. Um, I would ask that you accept the bid from Manats uh, for the $92,000. Uh, they do quite a bit of seal coating throughout the county. They haven't done it. 
uh, exactly for Black Hawk County in, in a long time, but they do good work and we are uh, confident they'll meet our contract and we will be seal coating the roads in Dewar, uh, Miller Creek Road and Falk Road and a couple of, of other ones. So about seven or eight miles of seal coating we'll be completing this summer. Thank you. Any further questions for Kathy? <coughs> Hearing on this resolution, please answer your name is called. Schwartz? Yes. Drelka? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. White? Yes, resolution adopted. Next is a resolution that the contract between Blackhawk County and Origin Design Company of Dubuque, Iowa for bridge inspections and bridge load ratings in the total amount of 38,000 be approved subject to the contract revisions by the Assistant County Attorney and direct the chair to sign for same as recommended by Catherine Nicholas, so county moved. engineer. Second. Moved in the second. Mm -hmm. Kathy? Yeah, this request comes for, is a calendar year contract, and we are drawing money of our out of F, FY 22 and 23 to pay for these uh, inspections. These would be our the 20 largest bridges where we need the snooper truck, truck to do the inspections. We just hired that out. <clears throat> And then we also need to do some load ratings to be in compliance with um, federal requirements for uh, certain bridges in the county. So I would ask that we be allowed to sign the contract with Origin Design for this work. Any further questions? <coughs> Hearing none, this resolution, please answer as your name is called. Drelka? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. White? Yes, resolution adopted. Other business. This is a motion at the ground shoes request for Hawkeye Community College to use the Blackhawk County Courthouse parking lot on Saturday, <clears> April 9, 2022, where a forklift training and certification be approved to receive and place on file the certificate of insurance for same and direct the chair to sign for same as permission letter for same. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Very none. Were there, all any the were there any issues in the last time they did it? No, not that we're aware of. Okay. <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. This is a resolution that the emergency repair for one of the three boilers at the courthouse work performed by WBC Mechanical Waterloo, Iowa, in the amount of $4,296.46, be approved as recommended by. Rory Geving, maintenance superintendent. So moved. Second. Mr. Geving. <clears throat> Good morning, board. Rory Geving, maintenance superintendent. Um, this, as it says, this was an emergency repair. Uh, we had uh, reached out to WBC on one of our three boilers. Um, it escalated uh, into uh, started off as troubleshooting that escalated into finding a, uh, a motor uh, that had st uh, gone bad. And so uh, what started off as a troubleshooting ended up being a pretty significant repair on that particular boiler. So that's where we came up with the dollar amount. Uh, more than half of that ended up being uh, labor. Uh, the other half was material. And uh, we planned... Has this been repaired already, Rory? Yes, it has. And uh, we do plan on uh, utilizing our uh, professional services account, uh, which uh, fortunately for us, uh, with the light winter that we had, uh, we feel that uh, we'll be able to accommodate that cost out of that line item. Are you sure it's working? Because it's cold in here. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, yeah, it is working. I can assure you that. <laughs> were the other two checked as well? I was uh, yes, they actually were. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? Hearing none, that's the resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Falcon? Yes. White? Yes, resolution adopted. Next is the resolution that the tax sale certificate assignment for one building located at 410 Mobile Street in Waterloo, Iowa, pursuant to 446-31 of the Code of Iowa be approved and said certificate of purchase of tax sale be assigned to 112 Randolph LLC as recommended by Rita Schmidt, County Treasurer. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Rita? Rita Schmidt, Treasurer. Um, 
Mr. Allen had uh, approached for the board to approve uh, an assignment on this property at 410 Mobile. It's a vacant uh, building, commercial building. I think his plans is to use it as his workshop, fix it up and use it as a workshop for his uh, business. And uh, taxes on this have accrued over 14 years to 28,000. Delinquent, that's a, with special assessments. Principal tax itself is around 6,800. So out of that uh, accruing interest and the special assessments with the real estate. So uh, he has uh, good hopes to fix it up and, and uh, keep the taxes up. And with that, he is also asking a compromise because of the high tax and special assessments. And that's your next uh, step, but uh, 2,000 is what he's offering for a compromise. Thank you, Rita. Any questions? Hearing none, that's the resolution. Please answer as your name is called. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Right? Yes, resolution adopted. 10D is a resolution that the compromise offered in the amount of $2,000 by 112 Randolph LLC on taxes owed to one building located at 410 Mobile Street in Waterloo, Iowa, be approved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, this resolution, please answer as your name is called. Schwartz? Yes. Trelka? Yes. Dalen? Yes. Little? Yes. White? Yes, resolution adopted. Next is a work session discussion on the American Rescue Plan Municipal Funding Request. James, how do you want to handle this? You just have each uh, each city representative step up, and uh, if there's any volunteers to go first, we can just kind of start down the line. There you go, Mr. Green. Morning, Mr. Green. Good morning, Supervisors, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to just give a brief uh, explanation of our ARPA fund projects uh, this year. Cedar Falls was very happy to receive $6.5 million in federal funds, and uh, through discussions with council and staff during our goal-setting session back in November and December, and then as uh, approved through our capital improvements plan and budget, we've allocated or, or uh, uh, targeted two different areas for the use of our ARPA funds. It's not glamorous, it's not exciting, but we're trying to use the funds as reasonably and as, as prudently as possible. So where we'll see our ARPA funds directed is in two projects, as I mentioned, one being Main Street reconstruction. So this will be a major project uh, in downtown Cedar Falls out to Searley Boulevard where that entire corridor needs to be uh, reconstructed. We've put off rebuilds for years uh, as we're kind of working out the designs and, and how we want it to, to function. So this plan uh, for the, the uh, corridor will include two roundabouts, or excuse me, three roundabouts, one at Searley, one at 18th, and one at um, uh, 12th Street. And the ARPA funds are gonna be targeted toward the sewer uh, infrastructure that's gonna be required there. So the total project is gonna be about $14.7 million. And we're very fortunate that with ARPA funds, we'll be able to offset some of that cost um, on the sewer side at about $1.9 million. So that helps to uh, decrease the, the, the tax burden and uh, the use of the lost tax, the, the local option sales tax for the road repairs. The second part is a much bigger project. That is our, our nutrient uh, reduction requirements that are being brought to us uh, by the EPA and by the Iowa DNR. Um, the total cost of this rebuild over uh, up until 20, uh, 2027 is gonna be $112 million. So it's funds that we have to spend. We don't have the choice there. Um, ARPA funds we're gonna use also as, as uh, since that sewer uh, uh, rebuild or sewer uh, uh, improvements are, are uh, authorized, we're gonna put about uh, $4.6 million into that project as well. So again, total cost ends up being about uh, 6.5 million of, of what we're, what we're uh, uh, granted. And uh, if the, uh, the county were willing to support those projects and use some of the ARPA funds that uh, were provided by the county to help us with those projects, that will um, help keep our, our property taxes, and especially in this case, um, the sewer uh, re rental fees that we'll have to charge for the, the major 111 or 100, uh, $12 million project, that'll help us uh, tremendously to keep those costs and burdens down to our, our taxpayers, which uh, will, will be a benefit to the entire community. 
So appreciate your consideration on that and uh, certainly uh, available to answer additional questions you might have. Any questions from any of the supervisors? Hearing none, who's next appreciate on deck? That. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Morning, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mike Shears, Mayor Dunkerton. Uh, ARPA funds, we're going to receive $120,000. We've received half of that, $60,000. We've allocated that $60,000 to a uh, filtration water plant that we're building right now in the process. That's going to be about a million and a half dollars total. So we've allocated half of that for that. but. We also need to rebuild Dunkerton Road that goes through the city of Dunkerton, which that's probably where we're going to allocate the other 60,000, but we probably that's probably a million dollar project too. So we're in need of funds to keep our taxes low. Hopefully our taxes are the lowest in, in Blackhawk County because we're trying to <coughs> pass that on to Dunkerton people to move into Dunkerton, so that's about uh, the extent of our ARPA funds. Like I said, it's not much, but we got big money projects that we need to do too. So I'd uh, wish you guys would uh, consider with the ARPA funds that you guys have to kind of think about keeping us in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good morning. My name is Jasmine Gaston, Mayor of LaPorte City. Uh, we got about a little over $300,000 in ARPA funds. Our first half went towards our Main Street reconstruction because we were, did have sewer work that needed to be done under Main Street. So that was able to be done there. Um, our second half, I think, is about $160,000. Uh, our sewer treatment plant does need, or wastewater treatment plant, does need to be redone. The last time it was reconstructed was in 1988. And the estimate for upgrades is 9.8 million. Um, obviously, we haven't bid that yet, so most likely it'll be more than 9.8 million uh, based off of costs of construction and things like, like that right now. Our sewer fees right now are $30.50 a month for our residents, and with the uh, cost, <coughs> our rates will go up to about $70 a month for our residents. So, 70? Yep. They will over double with the increase in costs. We had started raising rates early on, thinking that the project was gonna be closer to three million because that was initial estimates. And with the increase in costs and some changes with our DNR permitting and things that we need to have done, the cost has gone up. So if the county is looking to provide financial assistance to any of the cities, we would definitely appreciate that help to alleviate those increases to our customers. Um, I also had uh, Jane, We'll see our city clerk send you over the letter that we drafted that contains what's all going into the new treatment plant. So you guys should have that online. You, no, you mentioned just one question. You said that the total you received was 300000 A little over 300000 And half was going to be spent for the main street. Yep, for sure. And then we hadn't talked about the other allocation yet, but we just got kind of the increased costs. So, okay. yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good morning, Mark Tommy from the city of Gilberville. We received approximately 120,000 in funds. We're looking to, uh, and we have been uh, looking to build a new public safety building for years. By the time we keep fundraising, no, the cost just continues to go up with the ratio and things like that. The cost of materials went up. Um, approximately 82 by 160 foot building, it will house our police and fire. Um, the problem that we have with our fire now is uh, we would like to buy used equipment, but our station just doesn't work well for that. So by having a, a new station with larger, we can look to go out and buy some used equipment. Uh, as you know, fire equipment is really expensive over time. I will tell you, we're one of the fortunate cities in Blackhawk County that we do have a new wastewater treatment plant in the last five or six years. And uh, it was difficult to pay for it. Our rates are up. We had to start saving um, and charging people early on. So 
I can sympathize with the other cities and their uh, predicament that they're in. And this public safety building we've raised right now about 300,000. We plan to bond for some and then also go to the Blackhawk Gaming Commission. So any help that you guys could provide would be uh, greatly appreciated for the city of Gilbertville. Any questions? What do you think the total of that project is? About 1.3 million right now. And we're looking, we have a building uh, committee that's looking to scale back some things. You don't want to build something and say three months later, we should have done this. Mm -hmm. But we also don't feel like we need the Taj Mahal of uh, fire departments in Blackhawk County as well. So trying to be very conservative with our funds. Any other questions, questions for Mayor? Thank you, Mayor Tolman. Right. Thank, Thank you. Good morning, Supervisors. It's Lisa Smack from Elk Run Heights. And I've already had a long presentation with you guys. So do you have any additional questions at this time? Or? What is the amount your city received again for ARP funds? We got, it's about 160000 because 163000 those are entirely going to be used on our Gilbertville Road and Lafayette reconstruction next year. We have some water infrastructure that needs replaced at that time. I think Mr. Vick mentioned that their total amount received was going to be going for the wastewater treatment and yes, not for the road. I, is that correct? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. I knew he wasn't here. No, that's He's fine. He's a mayor pro tem and council member that's is here. Okay. That's okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Has your request, the amount of the request, or anything changed? No, I think we both both cities felt like the, uh, five hundred thousand mm -hmm. each is about what it would take to actually impact our residents' bill. That we we actually just redid our bill and reconfigured it for our July billing will change reflective and. Your guys, the funds that we get from you guys will make about a $16 a month difference per household if we would get that at this time and it makes a big difference to our residents. So, yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Deanne Kobliska, City of Evansdale. Good morning. Um, we are receiving approximately $710,773 in ARPA rescue funds. Um, we have uh, just recently, about I'd say eight months ago, we um, our engineers came to us and our wastewater um, employees, and we have to rebuild a lift station on Michigan Avenue, which is $620,000. Um, we had some necessary equipment updates for public safety, was around $10,000, and a sewer lining project. Um, we're uh, a lot of water is going into our uh, wastewater system. That's going to be $140,000. So sitting at about $770,000 and just had a meeting regarding our wastewater treatment plant rehabilitation and right now we're looking upwards of $9 million. So we also are requesting American Rescue Funds if you can consider us. Any questions? Any questions? <clears throat> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky Pint. I'm Mayor Pro Tem, City of Raymond. Mayor Vic couldn't be here today, medical reasons. And we received $118,000 from the American Rescue. Uh, we recently had to create a water loop and spent $100,000 on that. Um, no, we spent a million dollars on that. And uh, we've been saving for the sewer plant that we're building in conjunction with Elk Run uh, for several years, but our initial projected price was $6 million and it came in at $10 million and extra costs have make it growing every day. So yes, we would really greatly appreciate some help with that. Right now we're, we're looking at $75 a month, I believe, per citizen for sewer, which is 
a very high amount. Up from what? What was it? Well, right now I think we're at at around 50 to 60. So if we can keep it at the 75, that would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions or anything else on this? Mr. Chalka? I just have comments. We ready for comments? I'm ready. I was going to say, I'm assuming Mayor, some Mayor Waterloo, that you don't need to make comments that if we wanted to participate in your eight for eight big ideas in eight years is maybe what you'd be looking at if we were something. Thank you. Mm. Mr. Chalka? My, and this might have these also some questions for Mr. Perry. Uh, First, with some of, some of my comments, these are federal tax dollars that were provided to us. Uh, we're stewards of that money. Uh, I just filed my federal taxes. My brother just sold a portion of his farm and owes a significant amount in federal taxes, and I was going to thank him for contributing to this money that we've been blessed with to reinvest in our communities, because that's how I view it. When somebody builds a new business in Dunkerton, Evansdale, LaPorte City, Raymond, Elkhorn Heights, Waterloo, Cedar Falls, whatever, or a home, we realize county tax revenue from the building of that structure. Uh, I view this as a reinvestment in our local communities to keep us whole. I'm certainly willing to help out any one of these cities, consider their request, and then identify how much we should provide them in assistance. As a matter of fact, I'm to the point right now where I'm, I'm willing to, uh, I, I'd make a motion to set an amount, that would not for each city, but a total amount that we consider drawing funds from for these cities, for their help. All, all of them are worthy projects. And we are such a highly transit society now. If somebody's living in Dunkerton, they don't stay in Dunkerton. They probably work in Waterloo. If somebody goes to the doctor in Cedar Falls, they may live in Waterloo. Uh, people are coming and going constantly. My family's a good example. So I consider all these worthy projects. I want to support every single one of them. I, the only uh, discussion for me is how much we decide to invest in these communities. Ms. Whalen? I'd say all very worthwhile and worthy projects of, of making a request, so appreciate that everyone's here today. I think, um, as I've said probably several times, I think the county is where we have to look first. Mm -hmm. um, and whether that's considered selfish or not, I think these are opportunities and we look at those for the taxpayers as well as for all of you who are here representing communities. So um, I know we've said over several weeks and months that we have millions of dollars of need in our county, whether it be trails or I think we, Kathy's given us reports on deficient bridges that we have 19, I think, in the county. We're looking at a space assessment study right now where we're looking at all of our buildings and seeing if there's ways that we can make them more efficient for the customers and um, users of our facilities and um, our programs. So selfish or not, I guess I'm looking at our needs first and then, but still keeping these projects in mind and if there are ways that we can help. And um, like I say, very worthwhile projects and definitely helping people in Blackhawk County by doing it. So we are all working together, but um, that's, I guess I wouldn't be comfortable at this point making a, um, any kind of um, motion on what we would have available for these communities until we have more of our decisions made. Yeah. That's where I'm at right now. Anyway. Mr. Little. Yeah, I, uh, when this discussion first came up a few weeks ago, when we had the two mayors showed up under <coughs> comments, um, and quite a few of um, department heads contact me, and they were kind of upset saying that we haven't addressed all their concerns and projects, and they felt it was our obligation as county supervisors to take care of their own individual uh, departments first and um, and it was in the public safety health and also in conservation and we do have quite a few projects 
yet that we haven't talked about. Uh, we've got projects we've talked about but haven't decided if we're going to fund it. So I think uh, we've got a lot of discussion ahead uh, for uh, Blackhawk County as it is. Uh, I would encourage the uh, county attorney to check to see if it's even legal for one government entity that's receiving art funding to give money to another government entity that's receiving art funding when it was specified for each individual. Uh, I think that should be checked out. Um, but um, we did get, um, I believe, a few responses from some people out there that thought that we shouldn't be doing this. Um, it's up to the individual communities to, um, they're a taxing entity just like Blackhawk County. Uh, I'm surprised if we only got a few, or I did anyway, I don't know, maybe others got more, so uh, there'd be no action today anyway. I believe this was just put on as a discussion item only. Um, but I think um, we need to probably take a good look and, and um, we have until I believe 2024, but um, I think we owe it to our own department to uh, go through each one of them and make sure we have our county needs because what isn't spent through our money for our county is going to eventually down the road you're going to be taxing for it in the county so anyway um, like I said contact some of the department heads I think you'll hear the same thing that I did and I appreciate all the mayors coming today I talked to a lot of them on the phone after the initially the first two came and uh, I was really kind of surprised that the request was coming. Um, I'm not sure where it started, but uh, I can appreciate what they do. I live in Evansdale, and the mayor says $9 million. The last I heard it was going to be $13 million, and they haven't even started uh, construction. And you know the cost is going up every day, so I hate to think what my bill in Evansdale is going to go up, but at least they had hindsight and increased the bill here earlier. Uh, try to build some funding up, but unfortunately, it's a bill that uh, I'm going to be paying in Evansdale, and other people are going to be paying in their own towns. Uh, and we probably have one of the larger ones. I, she said nine million. I heard up to thirteen million or more. So it's not a cheap venture. And um, but anyway, that's my little piece. If anybody's got any questions for me, they can certainly uh, call or contact me anytime. Thank you, Tom. Mr. Swartz. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I think these are all uh, really good projects, and I would like to see us be able to uh, partner on them. The question for me is going to be at what level, and I don't think we're going to be ready to set that until I think we're getting closer to, to, knowing, to knowing what our own um, county needs are going to be and what those costs are. Um, I definitely want to see things like the new uh, public health clinic, you know, funded before we fund anything else. That's a critical first priority of, of these funding um, um, streams. Uh, but I also want to see us open uh, it up to the community for, for community-based proposals, um, whether it's nonprofits, uh, what have you, that are filling uh, gaps in social service needs here in the community. So we still need to hear from those. Uh, hear those proposals, as well as get the um, closer to final numbers of what our own projects um, and priorities are going to cost. Um, and then I'd be comfortable setting an amount in which we can participate with the, with the different cities on. Thank you, Mr. Schwartz. My comments would uh, be right in line with Mr. Little's and Ms. Leyland's, and uh, we need to look at all these projects first before we decide what we can do for the uh, community, you know, the small cities that run in Waterloo, Cedar Falls, and everybody else. So we've got a lot of work to do before we can say anything about giving, distributing money. I, I like the comment Mr. Little made about checking, make sure we don't do anything wrong too, because we don't know all the stipulations on how we can spend this money. Every time we think of something, something comes up. So uh, we'll keep you guys in all of the cities in mind when we're doing this process, so believe me. 
in the next couple of weeks we'll be having their space assessment probably the next meeting with them as well um, we expect I'm sure millions of dollars of projects in there but yeah don't want to give you false hope but want to let you know I guess to be encouraged about your projects yeah. at all that we will consider them and give well, you some space assessment when they came up with 80 90 million dollars <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah, we were that's shocked. What we're, that's, what, that's what we're looking well, at in some other areas. We need it. You have a comment, Mr. Meetings. Tony? Yeah. Come up to the mic, or, come up to the mic, please. Does Mr. Perry have any idea whether it is legal or not legal? It is. <clears throat> um, it is. So each each municipality would be a subrecipient of these ARP dollars, um, and they would just need to confine to the reporting requirements that we have. So. Having said that, we're, we'll take another look just to double check. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, guidance over time on this, a lot of misunderstandings. I don't see anything on preliminary review and, and for that matter, secondary review that would suggest that if it otherwise qualifies, it wouldn't be allowed. But having said that, uh, we'll take another look. Sure. I know we've asked multiple communities or counties, I guess, if they've done similar or had any experience with doing something like it and haven't had a response back yet that anyone has done it to that degree. But it doesn't mean we can't consider it until you tell us differently. Uh, there's a lot of language in this. <laughs> well, I, I, we had a meeting last night. I won't say with which board, but the board was going to uh, sell off or buy some property from the county, and that can't be done in the way that they thought they could do it they got to go through a special procedure so we got to make sure we dot all our i's and cross all our t's to make sure we do everything right so we don't get in trouble i think there were more final rulings last week correct so there's additional things that we have to keep seeing every time so, guidance yeah. keeps getting updated based on these <laughs> yeah. rulings yeah. thanks mike What's, what scares me the most We've all dealt with the federal government uh, over the years, and uh, I want to make sure whatever way we do the expenditures out here, we're doing it correctly. Because uh, two or three years down the road, I don't want to have to sit here and start paying money back that we should have allocated. So I want to have 110% sure that we're able to do this. Um, Mike is um, in half of this state of auditor or they the ones that kind of guide us through this or who's in control of that that has question. Well, with respect to guidance, Mr. Little, uh, we've received some guidance from the state auditor, but actually have received more uh, through national county associations and uh, to some extent through ISAC as well. Uh, so there's been multiple sources of guidance on this. They've been consistent. Yeah, uh, so. They have not been consistent. Yeah, no, um, they wow. they have been consistent lately, oh. uh, but initially things were not consistent, particularly on the issue of competitive bidding. Mm. Sure. And ultimately, the bottom line is the U.S. Treasury. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the state auditor will not have final say. Well, and this is one of the problems that comes when you have legislation where they want to attach a whole lot of strings to how money can be spent but they also want to push it out really really quickly and unfortunately a lot of misinformation comes out with it uh, but it's a good point to say that if if money spent improperly the federal government can claim it to be paid back and so we want to guard against that yeah. anything else on the subject hearing none any reports or information from the board I just want to thank all the mayors for being here. Oh, definitely. It's nice to see all yep. so many of us together in the same room uh, having this dialogue. Yep. Seen a lot of people on Zoom lately, but so it's nice to see yeah. faces and people Real faces. here. So, thank Rather you. than thank you faces for on TV. <laughs> I just got one thing. Uh, the Waterloo Warriors win the national tournament this weekend in uh, Dallas, Texas. And I don't know how many people from the area follow the Waterloo Warriors, but they finished third in the nation, so they got, they were awarded third place in the tournament. They did quite well. The only only team they had problems with was uh, a team out of Colorado, and the, up until the time the Waterloo Warriors played, 
them. They had score, They had only had three goals scored against them, and the Waterloo Warriors scored four against them, and lost five or six to four. It was five to four, and they scored with six seconds left. So it was an exciting game. So congratulations to Waterloo Warriors who got players in Cedar Falls, Waterloo, and even got a player out of Cedar Rapids. I don't understand why he doesn't play for the Cedar Rapids team, but we're happy to have him. So. With that, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? We are adjourned.